Hi, I'm Francesca Campoy and this is Just for Fun. Welcome to episode number 19 of Just for Funk. Today we will be using the IO package for good. We're gonna be trying to use three types that uh, maybe you've never heard about before, but do not worry, they're actually not that hard to understand in order to solve a problem. Now, the problem itself is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard about item two. It's a terminal available on Mac, at least, that allows you to do, among many other things, it allows you to write images directly into the output by encoding them into base64 and putting some header and footer at the end. Now, I wanted to do that as a package. And in order to do that, I need to use the IO package. I want to expose kind of a writer or uh, sometimes like an IO copy that will copy an image into that output. In order to do that, though, to write some good code, we will need to use a bunch of types that maybe you've never used before. The three ones that I think are the coolest are IO pipe reader, IO pipe writer, and finally IO multi reader. If you know perfectly about those three types, then you could uh, move directly and skip the introduction that I'm going to do uh, to this point, which I don't know yet because I will have it while I'm editing. But if you don't know what IO, IO pipes are or multi reader, then just keep on watching. Uh, it's gonna be a quick introduction, but I think uh, it will help you understand better what these types are able to do and why we can use them in order to solve that problem. Does that sound fun? Let's get started. Okay, so as always, I'm gonna start with a completely empty directory, and this will be open sourced in the Just for Funk repo, uh, github.com slash campo slash Just for Funk. So in this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply say that I'm going to call IO pipe and IO pipe is a function in the standard library in the IO package that returns two elements, two values. Uh, the first one is a pipe reader and the second one is a pipe writer. So normally what I do is I define them as PR and PW. Now these two values are really cool because what they are is something that allows you to, you, so you can write into the writer and whatever is written into that writer will be available to read from the reader. So, you can do something like, uh, let's say, uh, fprintlen into pw of hello, that will write hello into that writer. And then IO copy uh, of into OSSTD out of PR. IO copy. Now, this could fail. Uh, so, actually, uh, so if that fails, let's panic. And if that fail, let's panic. Okay, so we have now this program creates a pipe, writes hello into one end, and tries to read uh, that message into the from the output from the reader, and then copies that into the standard output. Let's try to run that. So go run main go, and this doesn't work, and it doesn't work because we get a deadlock, which is actually totally normal because if we go and read the documentation of IO pipe. Uh, it says pipe creates a synchronous in-memory pipe. It can be used to connect code expecting an IO reader with a code expecting an IO writer. The important part here is that it says it's synchronous. So in order to be able to write something, we need to have someone reading on the other side. Does that sound familiar? Uh, it's exactly how channels work in Go too, right? If you try to send something to a channel and there's no one on the other end trying to receive it, it will not work. Okay. So how can we fix this? What about we move this part of writing into a new coroutine? Uh, then, oops. Okay. So we move this part of writing into a, go, in a new go routine, right? So now we have a go routine that will write into the writer and then a different go routine, which is the main go routine that will read, write into the output and then finish. So let's write that now. And nope, <laughs> not much better. Well, I mean, it says hello, which is something. It's better than before, but we still get a deadlock. And why is that? Well, if we continue with the same metaphor for channels, if the same comparison for channels, uh, in channels, if you are ranging, which is what copy is doing, it's just reading until we get an io.eof and the file. 
if we are doing that in, with channels ranging until we range until the channel is closed. Here is the same. We will we will range until the reader is closed, but we are not closing that reader. So we should close that reader. Let's say, let's close that reader. Okay, so let's try to run that. Okay, we're getting closer, but still not there because we're closing the reader. And what happens when you try to uh, read from a closed, from a pipe that has been closed? Well, it fails. So what we want to do is not close the reader. We don't close, we don't want to close the, the reading end. We want to close the writing end, which will then notice the pipe and it will make it so it will return an EOF, end of file uh, error when you're reading, which will cause IO copy to return without any errors. So the whole difference is that instead of closing the reader, what you do is you close the writer, right? You get a pipe, you get the writing end and the reading end, you write into the writing end, you close it, then this one will be able to read the whole message that you wrote and then realize that the pipe has been closed because it will receive an EOF and the file and IO copy will finish successfully. Let's try that. Cool, it works, nice. So that's everything there is to know about IO pipes. That's it. An IO pipe, well, there's one more little thing that we will see later uh, that is super cool. But for now, it's enough to understand the basic concept of pipe. What about multi-reader? Uh, let's say that I have, a, a, let's create a reader from a string. So strings dot new reader of hello. And then we can do IO copy into the standard output of that reader. This is what it does is basically just write Uh, it reads from that string, gets the whole thing, and then writes into the output. Pretty simple, right? Now let's imagine that on top of doing that, you actually want to to have like a header, which is the same thing, but it says message. Let's let's say it's it's kind of like uh, XML and writer. A little correction there. I actually meant footer, not writer. Message. Now, in this case, it seems kind of simple because we know exactly how long those messages are. But imagine that you're just given three readers and what you what you told is, well, start with the first one, then once you're done, write the second one, and then once you're done, write the third one. And you could do that with, um, uh, with a range over IO reader, header, reader, writer. So here, what I'm doing is I'm iterating over those three and I'm using IO copy, uh, which is not working, Heather, because, why is this not working? Oh, I think that, um, let's call this body to continue with the same thing. Still not working, what's going on? Oh, I think that I'm not executing the good program. That might be why. Uh, yeah, I'm not executing the good program at all. Okay, <laughs> go mid. Okay, so get yeah, hello, mess uh, the message hello and, and message. Okay, cool, so this is a way of doing it. But actually to be correct, you should always check for that error. Uh, let's say I got panic here, but normally you should return it. So you need to do something about that. Well, instead of doing this loop, what you could do is to simply say, I'm going to create a multi reader that it's given a bunch of readers, header, body, and writer. And then we can simply copy into the standard output that reader. And of course, check for that error only once. So this code does exactly the same thing as before. But this is actually pretty cool because we're basically saying if you have a bunch of readers, you can merge them and uh, so you can concatenate them. That'd be the, the correct way of saying it. 
Okay, and what about multi-riders? Well, it's pretty much the same, but the other way around. And we're gonna call IO multi-rider. Now, IO multi-rider, what it does, it given a bunch of riders, it returns one single rider. So what would this be useful for? Well, this is actually very similar to that T reader that we saw on the episode talking about logpipe. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to do is actually instead of just getting two, like just making a T out of this, we're going to make, um, I don't know if multiplexer would be the word because we're not sending to one or the other, but basically we're going to create a bunch of copies. So let's say that we're going to copy something in the standard output, standard uh, error, and also to a buffer. And that buffer is going to be uh, bytes.buffer. Uh, and that's going to be our multi-writer. I can do print the land to the multi-writer, say hello, uh, and then say from buffer, buffer. So what we're going to, ha we're going to, what's going to happen here is that when we write hello into the multi-writer, that is going to be written both into standard output, standard error, and the buffer. So if we run now the good program, it says hello, hello, and multi-buffer from the, from the buffer. This first hello is into standard output. This one is from to standard error or the other way around. I'm not very sure, but it doesn't really matter. And then finally we print the one that we received in the, with, that we found in the buffer. That's it. Okay, so now that we have a better understanding of what IO pipe and multi-reader and multi-writer do, let's try to use them in a program. But before, let's write the, the program without being fancy, right? Like without actually having a package, just a program that works. I'm going to show you first that it actually works, and then we'll show you how, how, to, how it's done. So uh, I have a program already written. It's called ImageCat. And if you pass uh, gopher.png, it shows it right here. Cool. So this is what we're going to be writing first. It is pretty simple. Let's say that we can print as many images as we want. So we're going to say if the length of the arguments is less than two, then we should say uh, missing paths of images to cat to standard error. And then OS exit with two. Otherwise, uh, for every path in the arguments starting from the, from the second one, so we're going to uh, omit the name of the binary. We're going to call a function. We're going to call it cat that of path. If, if the error is not nil, we're going to f print f uh, could not cat this image. And this is the reason. So path and error. Okay. So now let's write that function cat. We're given a path to string, returns an error. And for now, it's going to do is we're going to open the file. Uh, so we're going to open the file OS open of path. So it gives a file and error. If the error is a nil, we're going to return that error. Well, actually, let's use um, Dave's Chani uh, errors package. It's pretty cool. If you never used it, I like it. Um, it's pretty much the same, but it simplifies uh, the formatting of things. So, okay, if the error is, is uh, so if there's an error, could not open, uh, could not open image. Okay, uh, not, let's make sure we close it at the end. Then what we need to do is create a base64 encoder because we're going to encode actually before I do this. So now that we have the file written and everything, how do we make it so the, so I turn to understand what we're trying to do? And it's actually quite simple. Uh, you need to go through the documentation and the documentation says that this is the protocol. So you, you start with an escape character, which is uh, 33 in octal, then uh, these characters here, which is a kind of a pun, because uh, it's like lit. Uh, it's their specific code to understand that this is something for item two. Then file equals 
all of the arguments that we want, uh, the arguments are in here. We're gonna be using only one, which is inline, and we're gonna always set it to one, uh, and that will actually print the image, show the image inside of the terminal, right? And just downloading it and showing a notification. And then the base64 encoded file contents, and then we end up with uh, with this symbol here, and this symbol here is the bell character, which uh, you can write it as backslash a. Uh, it's, it's a format. I don't know exactly what they do with this, rather than finishing with escape at the end, the same thing, but whatever. We start with escape, we finish with bell, and then all of the things in between. So we're going to copy this here. So we want to print into the output, we want to print the escape character, which we can write as uh, 33, that is an octal character, then this, then 133. One uh, thirteen thirty seven, file equals in line one. Then now in lines equal one. Then the column. Then the base sixty four. So base sixty four content, and then we're gonna finish with a, which is the bell thing at the end. Cool. So for the base sixty four content, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new encoder. So base64 new encoder, uh, we're gonna be using standard encoding and we're gonna write into the standard output directly. And that will return a writer closer, write closer, sorry. So we're going to use IO copy directly to copy uh, the content of the file into that encoder that could fail. So if that fail, we're gonna return errors that wrap could not write could not encode image uh, otherwise we need to make sure that we close the the right closer uh, that it's why it's a right closer because you need to close it and once you close it what happens is that you flush all of the all of the buffers inside of that encoder which means that we will actually encode the whole thing otherwise the encoder might be waiting for more content and never get to write the rest of the output. So it is important to close the writer closer. So we could do it here. Um, and this is actually something that I like of errors. Uh, it's if you wrap something, uh, which in this case we're gonna wrap close, uh, it will return an error that is not nil only if the error that we pass is not nil. So then you can omit that if error is not nil. I'm actually not sure if I like it or not. I think it's cool and it's nice to use, but it also hides a little bit the fact that there's a check in here, but whatever. Uh, okay, so we're gonna close it and could not close, basically for encoder. Um, that is not a new error. Okay, so that is our whole thing. We write our file, we, so we, we start with the header, then we write the base64 encoded form of that content, and then we put the bell character at the end. So let's try it. So if I do go build, that will generate an image cat right here, and if we pass, go for the PNG, it kind of works, but it does something weird at the end. Uh, I'm not very sure what that is. So let's try to debug it for a second. Oh, I think the problem is that at the end, we also want to print uh, an end of line. So this actually understands that that is what we want to do. Let's try that. Now that didn't fix it. We're still getting GG equals equals. That looks like the end of the base 64 encoding. I wonder what we're doing wrong in this. So we can the base64 encoder, we're running into the standard output. Oh, we're closing too early. So, okay, so that is the problem. When we close, we buffer, uh, we, we uh, flush the buffers. But we've written this before, so actually we cannot do it this way. So what we're gonna do is, uh, so if closing that fails, they're gonna return the error. Then we're going to actually print the head, the, the footer, and then return nil. And that needs to be in that order, otherwise it causes some problems. Okay, let's try it now again. Go build. Cool, okay, so now it works. We got the 
basic program working. OK, so the next step is I want to expose this uh, not as a binary, but as a library, as a package that anyone can use. And in order to do that, I'm going to define an IO copy uh, function that it's basically just simply going to do that. You create a copy. You, you can copy from a reader, whatever it is. So in this case, it would be the file image. And you give it a writer uh, or, a, or a standard output. It will do the whole thing, the basic for encoding and all of that transparently. Uh, so it's very easy to use. Let's do that now. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory uh, here. I'm going to call it image cat, uh, which I cannot do because it already exists. So let's delete that binary. I don't really want it. I'm going to create my new binary, my new directory, image cat. And inside, I'm going to have image cat.go. And the package image cat is going to expose a function that uh, is called copy and given, uh, no, sorry, not that, uh, writer and a reader it returns an error. Similar to the IO copy, except that I'm not going to return how many bytes were written. Uh, okay, so we have our copy, Janil, copy, copies the given image reader, and encodes it as an item to image into the Rather. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this whole thing with I, um, image uh We're going to write into the standard output from standard reader, uh, from F. And we're going to return that error. So now we, we're basically keeping uh, the, the binary as simple as possible, it just opens the files and stuff, and we just give it where do we want to print it and the file that we want to use. Um, there we go. Okay, so now this is not happy. Oh, just, yeah. Actually, just return that. Cool. Okay, so this should work. Well, I mean, it doesn't work because it's not implemented, right? So. Let's paste and then start working from there. So what we want to do is we want to change these for reader. Uh, this is not happy with this. And then return nil. OK, so this still works, which is cool. Let's try it. Okay, so this is still working. Okay, so before we continue, there's a little bit of a mistake in here, which is uh, we're actually printing everything to the output, uh, to the standard output rather than the writer that we were given. So let's change that by using fprintf. So that's gonna be that. Uh, the copy is gonna be done to the right closer, but this is gonna be writing to the writer. And then what else? The this is going to be written to fprintf to the output too. Uh, now that we do this, we need to check for the errors, right? Because when you're writing to standard output, you can't ignore the errors really. But now we don't know where we're running. Maybe we're encoding this into a connection. What if that connection fails? So we need to check for the errors. Uh, return error. And we're going to have to do that here. We're going to have to do it also here. Uh, F printf. OK, there's no new error here. There's no new error here. So we have a reader here, then IO copy here, and then, OK. So now that we have all of this, we, we see that there's a lot of like uh, error going on. And I'm not very happy with this, right? So what I'd like to do is, uh, what if we try to use uh, multi-reader, right? So could we do it? So we have our header, which is just this as a string. So strings dot new reader of the string. 
the right the footer is this here strings don't need reader of this and then want to do something with the rest of the content but then be able to do error io copy into the writer of all the things we got the header the body and the writer now the problem here is that uh, what is body we have not defined it also error is not defined anymore okay so uh body is not defined body is all of the content from here now we giving a writer but we want to get a reader hmm how could we do that well io pipes right so we can say uh, I want to use a pipe, prpw, io pipe, and then rather than writing into the output, we're gonna be writing into the uh, writing end of the pipe, and then we're gonna be reading from the reading end, and that should kind of work, um, except that this of course is io multi reader of all of this. Uh, this is not happy because writer is not defined. Oh, a footer, sorry. Okay, so now this, this might work. What do you think? Do you think this will work? Let's try it. So if I run this, oh, deadlock. Why? Well, because as before, now what we're doing is we're trying to encode into the pipe and then we will read later on, but that is not enough. We actually need to say, uh, this needs to be done both at the same time. And now this causes some extra problems because all of a sudden is, okay, so if you're doing this here, the, the coding, uh, how do you return that error? Hmm, not that easy, right? So what we can do here is to use that extra thing that I mentioned uh, that we had not mentioned before, called the IO pipe, which is one extra method, which is not closed, but closed with error. Now close with error, what it will do is it will close a pipe with an error and that error will be the one returned when we try to read from it. So rather than closing this, what we're gonna do is pw close with error of this error and then return, you're done with that. And similarly, we're gonna do here close with error and close. So could not encode that image, could not encode the 64 and now the error is not defined. So we need to return that. There you go. Okay. So now what we're doing is we're using close with error in order to pass the error that we got from the reader, from the writer, sorry. So whatever we're trying to write at the end. So uh, if we are copying and for some reason it fails, we get that error and give it to the pipe. So when you read from the multi-reader, you will get that error that will be returned by auto copy and they will return by copy. So it's a nice way of actually passing the whole error the, all the way up. This is kind of confusing. And in order to explain it to myself, I actually had to write a, a couple of diagrams. So it's probably worth taking the time to read these lines of code a couple of times and try to understand where those errors go. Let's try to run it now. Okay. So it doesn't work at all, right? <laughs> We're getting one and that's it. So we are indeed closing the encoder. Uh, so the WC is closed in here, but the problem is that we are not closing the pipe itself. So uh, we will exit uh, without closing everything correctly. So in order to close the pipe, we simply do PW close, which just in case we can actually do here defer because we want to close that in any case so now if we run it now everything works okay so to finish with the episode what i want to do is i want to provide one more api to this image cat library which is i want to provide a writer and the whole idea of this is that when you have a writer you can change you can chain it to other writers uh with copy here it's not really that easily done because image.copy so image cat.copy is a different function to io copy 
So basically what I want to do is I want to do so I could create a, a writer, which is image cat the new writer uh, that will write into the standard output. And then I can do uh, the IO copy into the writer and return that error. Uh, so that doesn't exist yet, but this is basically what I want to do. It's pretty simple, pretty clear, right? So now let's let's try to do that. So if I come here and I define my function, new writer, given a writer, we'll return another writer. So what we want to do is we want to uh, somehow call copy and we're going to be copying into the writer, but what? We're going to be reading from a reader, but that reader is actually the result of, so we want to read the content of whatever is written into this writer. So we're going to connect the reader and a writer. How do we do that? IO pipes. So let's do PR, PW, it's a new IO pipe. So we're going to be reading from the PR. Uh, for now, let's say that if the error is not nil, we're just going to do log fatal. We'll fix this later, obviously, because that's a very bad idea. Uh, but then we're going to be returning PW. Uh, what is the problem with this? Oh, that actually returns only one error. Cool. Okay, so let's document it. New writer returns a new image cat writer. Okay, so would this work? What we're doing is we're creating a pipe. Uh, we're giving the writing end to our program that to the program calling our library, and then we are giving we're getting the receiving the reading end, and we're using it to copy into the standard output. Uh, well, into the writer that we were given. So that looks pretty good. But will it work? Let's give it a try. Okay, so it is not working, clearly. It's just not printing an image. Instead, it just prints 1M something. Uh, why could this be? Well, let's see. We are indeed creating a writer and asking to copy, but the copy function, uh, what it does, it creates the reader. It then copies from reader to the writer. And now we never even write into this copy, so this doesn't make much sense. Um, Let's see if we actually do this. So now it works exactly the same way, which is not much. Okay, so we're copying, we're copying from the PR to W. If that fails, we'll look fatal. Also, at the same time, we are uh, returning the PW. So we're gonna write into W that will be copied into the reader oh i know okay so the problem is that uh we never close pw so we never co close pw which means that pr will never be closed either which means that copy will not finish so no f nothing will be flushed so the problem is that we're not closing things um when should we close it actually we don't know we should close it once we're done with the image so we need to allow the color to do that so instead of a write uh, of a writer, we're going to return a write closer. Now, happily, PW already is a write closer. So we can then say uh, this is a WC because it's write and closer. And so if the error is not nil, we do that. Otherwise, we're going to return the error of closing that. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, better, but still not there. What is going on now? Well, the problem now is that we are actually closing the pipe, but we're not waiting for anything to be flushed. So we're returning. So when uh, someone closes calls close, that pipe will be closed. So PR will be closed. So at some point, IO copy will finish. But we don't know when, and we're not waiting for that. So we need to make sure that we wait for it. How do we wait for things? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. But in this case, the best way is to use a channel. And uh, this is the typical idiom that we use with the channel called done. When the channel is closed, all of the people that are waiting on that channel will be uh, notified that they can continue, right? That way also fixes that if we close done, if we call close for multiple go routines, 
they all should be uh, released at the same time. So in order to do that, we need to create a new type that will contain that channel. So let's create a type router. It's a struct that contains the channel uh, done. Uh, it's empty because we don't need anything. And also we will need um, the pipe router because we're going to be still writing into it. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> run file here in the Im image cat pack, uh, package. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to be returning a writer that contains that PW and a new channel of empty structs. Now this will not compile because it's saying this is not a writer. It doesn't have method write. It also doesn't have the method method close. So we need those. Uh, so write given bunch of bytes returns an internet error. Uh, and this one simply what it's going to do is it's going to call write in uh, the pipe writer. That's it. That's pretty simple. Uh, oh, it's called data. Let's call it data too. Just to have the same name. Okay, and then close. And this one is the interesting one. What it's going to do is going to close the. What should it close? It should close the writer. So. And that returns anything else other than nil, we just return that error. And otherwise, we need to wait for done to be done. Uh, and once we're done, we return now. Now, this will wait until the channel is closed. So now we know that clo calling close will wait for something. Now, who's closing that channel? No one. When should this channel be closed? It should be closed as soon as, as, soon as we're done with uh, the copy. So here, once we're done with copy, we should exit. So let's do it with a defer. So defer, close. Uh, oh, OK. So we need to move this router, the right closer here so they can return it. So that way, otherwise, we cannot refer to the, uh, to the channel. OK. So now we know that uh, when we call close here, this will actually block until the copy operation has been done. All the flat, all the buffers have been flushed, including the one for the encoder, and then we're actually done for real. So let's try that. Nice, it works. Cool. There's one more little thing, which is what happens if the writer we're using is is wrong, right? Like, let's try to create a, a very bad uh, a bad writer. Bad writer is a struct. This would be more something that you write in a test, but uh, and then when you try to write into a bad writer, it returns zero and bad writer. It always returns an error. Returns an error. We don't need to name any of the parameters. We don't need to name this parameter nor the receiver because we're not using them. Um, I'd rather not write them so it's very clear that we don't use them. So if now, instead of writing into um, the output, we write, we write into a bad writer, uh, which I don't know why I'm passing a pointer because there's no point. Uh, when we call this, it just asks log fatal. I don't want it to do log fatal. What I want it to do is to actually get that error somehow and send it correctly. Now that log fatal is coming from here. Uh, here, where? Here. This log fatal will uh, will just do log fatal error, right? And this is not what I want to do. Instead, what I want to do is I want the uh, close operation to return it. How do we do that? Well, it's actually incredibly simple. And it took me a little bit of reading documentation to understand why this works. But what we can do is we can close the PR, so the the reading uh, the reading part of the pipe. So it's saying, I know you're working with the writing side of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna close the reading, saying this failed and this the error you should return. So it's as simple as this. Now when we try to write into the pipe or close it 
on the writing end, we will get that error instead of any other error. So let's try that. There you go. Now it's cool not cat go, cat go for the PNG because of that writer. So now we're actually going through the correct uh, error path that I wanted. So if we go back to this and we move OSTD out. I'm going to try to do one more test, which is uh, going to try to run this program with an image. And it works. Perfect. Uh, yes. I turn to also supports GIFs and my program will also work with that because GIFs are just base 64 and COVID too. So that's awesome. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, it was harder to prepare. There was a lot going on, a lot of documentation reading in order to make this happen. Thanks to uh, Raquel on Twitter, uh, JBD, Jana for being so nice and helping me with this. She reviewed my code and make it made it so much better. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Find the code on my tools repo on GitHub. You can also find uh, the code that I actually showed here on Joseph Funk on my repo on GitHub. And leave your comments. Let me know what you think on Twitter. As always, thanks for watching. See you all in two weeks. And now I'm going to go have a beer with Dave Cheney because I'm visiting in Sydney. Goodbye. <laughs>